Hey, this is Mrs. Clark, and today I'm going to show you how to make these really cool factor ornaments that you can hang up as a foldable, or you can hang it on a tree, or just anywhere that you want. They look like this before we make them, so you can click on the link in the description to get these, but you can also just use any square piece of paper if you want to fold it like this. Here's what you'll need for this project. So you'll need scissors, but that's just to cut it into a square. So if it already looks like this, you don't actually need the scissors anymore. Something to decorate it with, some type of glue, and then some type of yarn or string for this part. And I'm just using embroidery floss. So the first step is just to fill out the page. And then you're going to fill out the factors for each number. Say how many factors it has and how many factor pairs and then whether it is prime or composite. That's the first step. Then the second step is to decorate and you can see that I've already done that. Let's move on to step three and actually start folding it into an ornament. Here's how we do that. The first couple steps are really easy. You're just gonna fold it in half horizontally and vertically and then diagonally. There are some really faint lines on here to show you where to fold. One, two, three, four, but I may have colored over them or maybe they didn't turn out in the copier, but really all you're doing is this. You're gonna fold it in half every possible way. So I'm folding it in half horizontally and then I'm gonna fold it in half vertically. And I am trying to line it up the best I can because that'll make it way easier later. So that's my first step. I folded it this way and that way. And now I'm going to fold it diagonally as well. So I'm going from corner to corner two times. That was that corner, and now I'll go this way. We have made four folds. So we did these folds, and then we did diagonal folds, and here's what it looks like. The next step is just to fold all of those again the opposite way so that this is really easy to fold. What I mean is, yes, I did it like this. Now I'm just going to fold it back on itself. The folds are already there. I'm just folding them backwards. And the more I do this, the easier it is to work with. So I'm just folding it both ways. So just every fold that you've done, redo it and then do it backwards. And so this should be super bendy and foldable now on all those different crease marks. Especially want to get the diagonal ones really nice. Okay, there we go. Now, before you start gluing and getting your string and all of that, we're going to practice folding it into this shape just so that it's easy for you to do. Something that really helps me when I'm folding it is to remember that the ones that are the same number are going to get folded in half. So it's almost like the 19 and the 19 are going to get closed like a book when I do it. The 32 and the 32 like that. And then later I open it and look at it. So let me show you what I mean. So like this 19 right there, it's gonna go fold in like a book, okay? But the main way we do this is we wanna think about it like we're folding all of the corners into the middle and we're gonna end up holding it like this. So I'm just gonna put a couple corners in the middle like this. Remember that the this number closes like a book like that. So I can do it on here too. This 18 will be closing on itself like a book. And look at that, now I've got the 19 and the 18 both there, okay? 
posing like a book. 19, 18. Okay, taking the corners to the middle is all I'm doing here. But you can see I'm going real slow. I'm just doing a little bit at a time. So now let's take the 24 to the middle. And this needs to be bent a little more. It needs to go in, so it needs to close on itself like a book. There, I took the 24 up. Let's look at our last one and fold it. And the 32 needs to close in on itself like a book. And it's doing it for me because I already made those folds before. So, this is what it looks like. It almost feels like a cootie catcher. I can open and close it with my hand. And then something I can do is I can kind of reinforce it by just folding each one over like this. Okay, now we're going to put the string in and we're gonna put a whole bunch of glue on it. And then we're just gonna fold it back together with all the glue on it. And you don't need to use all your glue right now. You can always reinforce it later. So open it up. It does not matter where you put the string. You just wanna pick one corner. So like there maybe. And since this is the top, that's the top of all the numbers. So it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna put down some glue and I'm going to put my string in. And I'm going to put both sides of the string. That way it makes a loop. Okay, now I'm gonna put more glue on this and the best part to put glue is on these creases here and these creases here. Obviously I wanna put on the ends too. I don't wanna put a whole bunch to make it lumpy, especially if you're using liquid glue. Just put a little bit, but I do recommend a glue stick for this. Here we go. Now I'm just going to fold it back up like I did before. Remember that each one folds in on itself. So let me show you kind of how I want to do this here. I'm going to take one of them, fold it in. And as I do so, do you see this one on the right is coming with it? And they should just line right up. So that these two are now lining up. I'm just going to squeeze them together, get them there at the top. Now, let me come over to this one and just kind of push this 18 in. And you see these two are just naturally coming together. And as I do that, I wanna check at the top too that I like where it's landing. And there's a loop, uh, bump there, it doesn't matter though, cause I'm just gonna go like this and pinch it. That's why I wanted a lot of glue in those creases. Coming over, let's do this one. So just take this and this one's just gonna push up. And I've got a flap here and a flap here and I'm just gonna pinch them together. The reason that this is looking easy for me is because I practiced making the shape ahead of time. So the paper remembered the shape and it wanted to go back to it. So the more practice you do before the glue, the better it'll be when you actually have the glue in there. And now I'm just reinforcing them. And now I have an ornament, like this. And I can hang them on my tree or you can hang them wherever you want. So I hope that that's helpful for you. If you click on the link in the description, you can get all 12 designs. Each design has four different numbers and they do vary from easy to more difficult. And so you'll get 48 numbers in all, and it comes with a blank version too, so that you can put your own math problems on these.